Okay, you have to see this video. What you are watching are plants speaking to each other, captured on tape for the first time ever. They are warning one another that there is danger nearby. Off screen, a plant is under attack by a caterpillar. Just minutes after the caterpillar's feast begins, news of the event reaches the plants that you see here, and it ignites a chemical reaction that sweeps across the surface of the leaves, warning the plant to prepare its defenses because it might be next. We've speculated on the mechanisms for how plants can communicate with each other for a very long time. Since the 1980s, scientists have known that plants can signal to nearby neighbours when they are under stress, but this is the first time that we have started to understand the exact system that these warnings are passed through between plants, and captured real-time footage of this process in action. This opens, for the very first time, a window into a world of communication that we have never seen before. Plants are far from passive species in their environments. They have many different methods of communication with the world that is around them. And not just the things that you might expect, like brightly colored and sweet smelling flowers to attract pollinators, but actually they have many more sophisticated systems. In 2001, a research team at the University of Bristol found that tiny electrical shocks to a flower on the order of just a few hundreds of picocoulombs could trigger the flower to increase the amount of scent it was producing. The research teams hypothesized that this ability to increase the flower's scent would be beneficial if many pollinators were in the area to help them attract them. But ultimately, this would be expensive for the plant to maintain if pollinators weren't actually nearby. Many pollinators, like bees, have been known to accumulate positive electrical charge as they rapidly beat their wings in the air. The research team found that when a flower was visited by a bee, some of that charge transferred onto the flower, which would last for several minutes, but not enough to cause the flower to produce more scent. But if five or more bees visited a plant in a short period of time, this caused enough charge to build up on the flower that it triggered an increase in scent release, and as a consequence further increased the number of bees that were attracted to it. However, this only worked up until a point. Pollen is negatively charged, and so it's attracted to the bees when they land, taking some of that negative charge away when they leave. A separate study found that bees may be able to sense the electric charge of the flower, and for ones recently visited by another pollinator which would have less pollen and less nectar available, they would now also be less negatively charged, and so bees may be able to choose to actively avoid them. And maybe this explains why frequently visited flowers needed to up their scent production to keep bees frequently visiting them. Now this is a level of refinement in chemical and electrical communication with their surroundings that is far beyond what I think most people would have initially thought plants would be capable of. But life's drive for attraction and ultimately reproduction is one thing. We know that life puts a huge amount of effort into ensuring continuation of the species. Life uh, finds a way. But the ability for plants to communicate about an anticipated threat in the environment, when ultimately they look somewhat helpless to avoid that threat, seems like something different. However, these mechanisms, it turns out, may be just as sophisticated. The type of communication that I want to focus on are chemical warning systems. But before I do that, I have to thank today's sponsor of Private Internet Access. Browsing the internet with an encrypted connection is like sending a private message to a group chat. Everyone that wants to can see your search activity. Private Internet Access protects you from the prying eyes of hackers, internet service providers, and others that can view your personal data. As an added benefit, many websites and services across the internet are only accessible depending on your physical location. So a VPN allows you to browse streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, and more that have different library options based on where you are actually located. Private Internet Access is the world's most transparent VPN provider with over 30 million downloads. They never record or store user data and their no logs policy has been proven multiple times in a court and by third party audit. Private Internet Access is available for all platforms, Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux, iOS, and more. If you are are ready to start protecting your internet traffic, use the link down below to grab an extra 85% discount on private internet access. That's just $2.03 a month and you also get four extra months completely for free. Now back to the video. Around all plants, there is a fine mist of chemicals that hangs in the air, continually released and absorbed by the plant, a constant chemical broadcasting and receiving system, specifically through the use of volatile organic compounds or VOX. 
Now, volatility is a measure of a substance's tendency to evaporate and become a gas. So the idea here is these are generally small, organic, meaning carbon-containing molecules that plants produce, which are quickly turned into vapor and carried off by the breeze. It turns out that when conditions are just right and plants are collected together in high density, this communication web can be seen as a bluish hue that hangs over the forest canopy, produced by the oxidation of these VOC emissions. A 2001 study found that this bluish haze was capable of absorbing UV radiation from the sun, further protecting the forest from UV damage, as well as reducing the temperature in the forest floor. A particular subclass of Vox are called green leaf volatiles, and they are involved in a pattern of attack and protection in plant species. That smell of cockgrass that most people can instantly recall, that's a green leaf volatile, specifically cis-3 hexanol, released by mechanical damage to a grass leaf. Although it's arguably a pleasant smell to us, what it might really be is a war cry. A 2014 study out of Texas A&M identified a species of parasitic wasps that targets common crop destroying pests. The research team hypothesized that when these pests began chewing on crops, the damage of their feeding would release green leaf volatiles which the wasps would use to locate their prey. In order to test their idea, the researchers genetically engineered a corn plant to remove its ability to produce these green leaf volatile compounds. When researchers then placed equal numbers of pests onto both crops with and without green leaf volatiles and let those pests feed, they found that wasps were only attracted to the green leaf volatile producing crops and almost entirely ignored the altered crop. What's interesting is that these green leaf volatiles aren't just used for calling in the cavalry and attracting other species to aid a plant, but also create responses in neighboring plants. This process is what researchers at Saitama University set out to better understand, down to the molecular mechanisms that facilitate the perception of Vox and how plants prepare their defenses in response to a threat. The researchers set up a container filled with plant matter and hungry caterpillars and connected it via an air pump to a peat Petri dish containing a genetically engineered strain of the mustard plant, Arabidopsis thaliana. The cells of these particular mustard plants had been designed to express the green fluorescent protein GCAMP3, which although it sounds like a new file format, is actually a method that the researchers could use to track calcium signal levels and activation in the plant cells. So now, when the cells of the mustard seed send signals to other cells nearby by exchanging calcium ions, it would produce corresponding flashes of green fluorescent light. By using a wide field fluorescent camera observing the mustard plant, they could watch how signals move around the leaves. As soon as the pump was turned on and the volatiles from the container with the feeding caterpillars began to flow over the leaves, the mustard plants erupted into a light show of communication. In less than a minute, the wave of detection floods over the entire leaf, and a few minutes later, the entire plant glows in preparation for an attack. What I find most fascinating here are the smaller flashes of light that move outward from different points on the leaf, like tiny impact craters, revealing the leaf's previously hidden universe of communication and activity. But what's actually happening here? That was partly the question that the researchers wanted to answer. Covering the surface of the leaf are tiny stomata, a word originating from the Greek word for mouth or opening. By zooming in to their study, the researchers could watch as the detection of Vox started at the stomata before igniting a trail of activity that continues through the plant's mesophyll and then epidermal cells. These stomata are small pores that connect inner tissues of the plant to the outer atmosphere and play a key role as guards or signaling cells in the detection of Vox from nearby plants in distress. By testing a range of Vox on the plant, cells, the research team found that these stomata could detect the difference between various green leaf volatiles, which out of the compounds that they tested, two in particular, Z3HAL and E2HAL, then triggered further changes in the plant, upregulating genes associated with defense, specifically ways of dealing with oxidative damage and heat stress, meaning that plants may be communicating about more than just caterpillar attacks, but also local environmental conditions and preemptive re-engineering their cells operation to better deal with those incoming challenges. 
Now, I love studies like this because it peels back those preconceived notions of how you believe a system that you think you understand actually operates, and it shows the unbelievable complexity, sophistication, and inventiveness of life. What you could be surrounded by your entire life and never once have an inclination of the depth and wonder, I think to me that's just the joy of finding these things out. If you liked this episode, leave me a thumbs up and let me know what would you say to plants if you could better talk to them. Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.